My name is Calliope, daughter of the sky god Zeus, and muse of much renown. Sit here at my perfumed feet as my poem unfolds before you, an epic that springs from the depths of the sea and finds its end upon strange shores. For this is your story, the story of Argonus, son of Argus the shipbuilder and friend to Jason the hero. Our tale begins like many a sailor's story before it, with tragedy and a lilting song that carries from one dark wave to the next. Awaken. Book One, The Blight. A frozen scream is etched upon the face of bewitched Typhus, helmsman of the Argo. This owl seems unaware of its preternatural perch and unconcerned with the plight of a shipwrecked sailor. Tis but a single plank, no doubt, from a sunken ship. Tis but a single plank, no doubt, from a sunken ship. The death that haunts this isle did not spare even a child from its sorcerous wrath. No craftsman could sculpt a child so lifelike, nor create that which now stands lifeless. Abundant with boughs of leaves, this mosaic appears to be made of limestone and thus surprisingly light. This statue is of Amphitrite, queen of the sea. Sadly, the goddess did little to hinder the decimation that litters these rocky shallows. This wild sheep appears interested in nothing more than the grasses that grow upon this beach. Tis Palamonius, son of Olenane Lernus, whose bodily frame and valor no man could match. This child was not struck down by mortal ills, but surely by something that is beyond this world. This young woman most likely a temple worshipper, seems to have been frozen in time.
<laughs> An unseen hand forces Argonus from his feet and into a dense thicket skirting the stone path. A soothing voice murmurs in his ear as the sailor witnesses the passage of things only spoken of in tall tales, and even then, in whispers. Be quiet for but a moment, the voice counsels. Once the otherworldly creatures fade from sight, Argonus pulls himself from the dust and gazes skyward. Before him, held aloft, is a handsome woman replete with glory and power. How many times must fair Athena save one man? The immortal asks, her head tilted with uncommon grace, her eyes soft. Before words can form on Argonus's lips, she continues. Tis not a query to be answered so readily, sailor of the Argo. Shadows gather, she says. There is a blight upon this isle. Have you not seen its handiwork? The flesh of your companions no longer flesh. Their bones, that of the earth. The woman's eyes drop. I fear my own hand may have set these dire events into motion. For this, I will make amends. But know well, many of your brethren yet live, for I have seen them with my own eyes. Find them, Argonus of Crete. And as I did for your father before you, I shall provide a boat and passage from this isle. You have the word of fair Athena. Not a heartbeat later, the goddess is gone, and breath gladly returns to the sailor's lungs. The statue is certainly that of the hero, Oileus peerless in courage and strong in spirit. Tis Phalerus of the Ashen Spear. His father, great Alcon, shall never again welcome home his prodigal son. No doubt struck by the hand of an Argonaut, the head of the Hydra lies lifeless, its flesh still warm to the touch. No doubt struck by the hand of an Argonaut, hail strong Erebotes, the son of Iris, skilled in the seer's art of seeing between the mortal coil and the dark veil beyond. If not for its stone plight, this Methosian Hydra is like the one said to have been brought low by Heracles during his twelve labors. Paul Canthus, son of Abbas. Never was there a sailor more eager to quest or raise weapons against a common foe. It is said that he was granted an enchanted weapon from Ares himself. Tenorus has lost a great son in Euphemus. He was the most swift-footed of men and was wont to skim the swell of endless seas. Peleus was a welcome comrade and could fashion ships to make trial of the seas with heavy oars. Tis the visage of strong Asterius, son of Hipparasius, who stood two score of men against the Gagenes on the land of the Dolionis. Her planks broken and her floorboards shattered. This skiff offers naught but harbor to small fish. The stone drops neatly into the groove and the great eye slowly moves, revealing a hidden passageway.
This carving is assuredly the work of a master craftsman. Ancient tome in hand. This priest was caught unawares and is now made of the same stone as the carved god behind him. While this woman was surely an attendant of the temple, she shall never again set evening lamps alight. Even the pious have not been spared the bewitchment that has befallen this isle. Unlike the unearthly statuary that inhabit this isle, this towering statue of Poseidon shows the workmanship of a master sculptor's hand. This stone is bereft of markings offering no explanation for the small depression set into its surface. The yellow light it emits is curious. Unencumbered by the burdens of man, this mosaic depicts the gods both at war and at rest. This vase, portraying Poseidon and a merhorse, may have once held water or oil. At the moment, however, it holds neither. The lovely purple color of this flower conceals its poisonous nature. Using the broken spear, Argonus plucks the necklace from its roost before laying it about his neck. <laughs> 